So I wanted to do this live stream. I haven't been around very much. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. I appreciate everybody out there who still supports the channel, especially Jason XR4, who is a member, and Extra Mundo Taro, who is also a member. Thank you very much for your support. Appreciate it. Blessings to you and yours. Uh, I just pulled up on my screen and did a search for the term quantum grammar. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to try and share my screen here and show you my little search and what I saw. So I brought this up. Of course, this right here, this channel has been around longer than I've been here for the Quantum Grammar channel, and it's got its little dangling participle <laughs> colon at the end there. But be that as it may, it is a great repository of data. It's a great Quantum Grammar uh, compendium of grammar videos. Let's just check that out for one minute. Let's check out their videos. Let's go to the oldest videos on the Quantum Grammar channel. No need to apologize, Jason. I was just in a very serious mindset when I got here. Uh, but I, I can I can adjust. I'm very good at adjusting. I might be a little slow on the uptake, but uh, I do get it eventually. Hopefully. All right, so check it out. 11 years ago, they started posting about Sumerian lectures, which I imagine has to do with Zachariah Sitchin, his 12th planet series of books, which I personally have read and found super interesting. The Anunnaki, Enlil, and Enki, and all that stuff. I don't know if any of you out there are familiar with that, but it's a pretty interesting rabbit hole to go down. I don't think folks realize the length and breadth of what I have actually researched and read. If you can think of a topic, a quote-unquote conspiratorial topic, having to do with religion, the supernatural, history, or things like that, I've probably read about it in my 50-some years on this planet. I began researching this stuff when I was 14 years old, okay? Anyways, so 11 years ago, they were posting about Sumerian lectures. When did they start posting about correct sentence structure? Seven years ago. <clears throat> Seven years ago, they started posting. And here you go. Here's Look at all these uh, David Miller videos here, the famous nine-hour one. This one's really good. The Director's Party, Russell J. Gould. This is, look, folks, I got to tell you, whatever you think of that guy, whatever your personal feelings or whatever about that guy, that video right there is great. It gives you an overview of the basic, I mean, talking about rudimentary caveman level basics of correct sentence structure. But the real value of the video is the postal and banking and flag mechanics and courtroom mechanics, quote unquote, that he shares. This is a Russell that ceased to exist after David passed away in 2018. This is a different Russell. And even in that video there where he's doing it solo, he still defers to Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller as the boss because someone from the audience asks him some a question about something. And then Russell says, ah, Dave told me not to talk about that, to paraphrase, you know, so he is deferring to David's authority in that video. Just saying, just a continuance of the evidence that this guy right here, David Wynn Miller, was without question the boss, the master in that construct. Anyways, great video. If you want to learn about that, uh, postal mechanics, banking mechanics, 
courtroom mechanics, flag mechanics, so on and so forth. This is a shipping mechanics is a good one to watch. Then he goes back to the Sumerian stuff. Oh, wow. They're really interested in, <laughs> they go from fiction to fact in a heartbeat, don't they? Here's more. This one right here with, uh, for the David Wynn Miller Federal Postal Court Quarant. Shit grammar, but whatever. Uh, th this is a actual court case that they did. He did. Russell wasn't there, but he he did this himself. And then uh, this is the postal court where they explain it. Um, molecular biology. Ooh, more speculation. Let me get back to the fact of quantum language. That's an old one right there. Look at all this stuff, folks. Look at all these videos you could watch. All the knowledge that is. Oh, here's another case. But this time David's not there and Russell's doing it uh, solo. For the correct, or yeah, for the correction of the David hyphen wind of the Miller. This is a heavily edited video that is complete and utter bullshit. War castles. Propaganda. This guy right here. This guy right here. Colon Gordon hyphen Michael colon Schiller. His last name is Schiller. That's an interesting last name. Anyways. The last time I looked at this guy's grammar, he does not know how to construct a complex correct sentence structure that is correct forwards and backwards. He does not know how to maintain the mathematical interface and the grammar, and he certainly does not know how to syntax, but he does have a certain knowledge level. And I do enjoy actually watching him give presentations because he's got that certain kind of, uh, how do you say it? Uh, good old boys club type of uh, presentation that kind of goes along with the bravado of a David Wynn Miller, the attempted bravado of a Russell J. Gould. Uh, he kind of has that, but unfortunately he just does, or fortunately, depending upon your position, he just does not have closure on the grammar. And that guy actually tried to dox me one time. So that says something about that fellow's character. So the War Castle series, in, in, from my perception, is just propaganda trying to build up Russell's, to build Russell's backstory. If he were a character in a video game, this is what we would call lore, is building up a backstory to try and bolster him up to achieve whatever he's trying to achieve now which I have no idea what that is. Oh, this guy, Monty. I can't remember his last name. But there's another guy that, that comes from the good old boy club and is basically a Russell J. Gould, and from my perception, an acolyte, a follower, a cult follower. Uh he also does not have closure on the grammar. This is great. Russell and Gordon, these are great videos. Russell, when he was like, I don't know, 12 years old. Or, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> he was a very young man there. Actually, I, I, I'm older than Russell. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I am. I'm older than Russell. And this is Gordon Gaunch. Interesting thing about this, I'll, I'll share this with you, and I have shared this in other videos. Lord knows where they are. But um, in, let's see if this video is up here with uh, Mark Shun, Christopher, and Russell J. Gould. Right here in this video, for the closure of the postal mechanics, Russell talks about Gordon in a very 
negative fashion, saying that Gordon has no honor, pretty much that Gordon was a a wimp, that he wimped out when it came down to brass tacks. Gordon was a piece of shit, you know. I'm paraphrasing. They, they Gordon couldn't cut the mustard in this video, right? And in, in, in this video, right? There. Man, how these folks must not use correct sentence structure in practical everyday life because they, their continuance of the evidence is shoddy at best. Can't even put the date to the video up. Now, when I did a uh, commentary on this stuff, I put the dates up. But again, you can look that up on this channel. It's all there, public record. Okay. This video, I'm not sure when it was published. Probably around 2014, 15-ish. And this is where Russell's bad-mouthing his former partner, Gordon. But when you come to the Reno seminars, which where are the Reno seminars? They, they got to have the Reno seminars on this channel. Funeral seminar, they call it. All right. In these videos, which were published in 2018, Russell speaks very highly of Gordon, saying he's a man of honor. So there's a direct contradiction. Folks, it's not the only contradiction. This guy is a walking contradiction as far as what comes out of his mouth. One day, colon Robert hyphen Leroy colon Horton, Sergeant Horton, is a trashy bitch. And the next day, he's back to being Sergeant Horton and, and everything's fine. <laughs> Woo. Anyways. To the original volition as to why I'm looking at this channel, it's just a great repository of, of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge, history of uh, of the construct. And they uploaded as recently as four weeks ago. So, cool. The heaven and the earth. And from verse 2, Genesis chapter 1, from verse 2, is an explanation of how God created the heaven and the earth, which is this word. Verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, before God created this world, everywhere was water. Water was everywhere, and everywhere was dark. There was darkness everywhere. There was no single light. Verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Okay. Not going to listen to any more of that bullshit because it's all speculation. People making whole ass videos about fiction stories. That's the amazing thing about religion, folks, is that it gives so much fodder for folks to feed on that have nothing better to do. Just argue and argue about the secret meaning of the sun or the secret meaning of the Bible or the Quran or the Kabbalah, whatever. Everybody, you know, thinks that they have the correct translation and it's all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, bullshit. From my perception, religion and the religious texts that have been disseminated are the single biggest and most successful control mind control mechanism ever perpetrated upon mankind. Why? Because it gets people to believe in something they cannot prove. 
And if you can get folks to believe in something they can't prove with their senses, you can get them to do anything. You can get them to kill people, unalive people, as YouTube likes to uh, have you say. So it's, it's actually kind of disgusting to me. So anyone who uses quantum grammar or wants to use quantum grammar yet participates with that type of thing, I caution you to be very careful because if you cannot prove your beliefs to another contract party, if you cannot certify with a continuance of the evidence what you're saying, whether it's God, Jesus, Allah, Muhammad, whatever it is you're doing, Buddha, you're going to be in some deep doo-doo. You have to be able to prove everything as facts. That's the basis of correct sentence structure. So when I see someone doing that, that tells me they don't have closure under grammar right away. That they do not have 100% closure under grammar. All right, this individual right here. Marcel. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Let Share this tab. For the modification of the fact is with the crime proven by the felony... Why is P-E-R in brackets? Why is M-O in brackets? Folks. And this is why I say it would behoove you to look up every single thing in an etymology dictionary. If you look up modification in an etymology dictionary, M-O is not a negative particle. But if you look up movement in an etymology dictionary, MO in that sense is a negative particle. So if we're going to use etymology and the roots of language as our basis for whether something is positive or negative, then we have a basis, a foundation across the board that everyone can use. It's just up to you to use it. And this individual obviously has not used it. They're just assuming it's my guess. They're assuming that M-O means no in any scenario. N-O, M-O means no in any scenario. <laughs> so they use proven, P-R-O. Look that up. That is, a, that is a particle of negation. Perjury. Why is P-E-R a particle of negation when we use it in the word performance? Well, look it up and find out. In the grammar. Okay, here we go. This one, if those other ones don't, this one does. An incorrect positional throws the whole thing into ad, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, bullshit, quantum gobbledygook. They have the authority here, but then we have another position, lodial phrase, following that, and it's not even a correct positional. So how would you say that backwards, Marcel? Out the grammar. For the felony perjury and manipulation is of the crime proven with the fact by the modification? I don't think so, folks. I'm pretty sure this guy was uh, part of the old boy clique that I was talking about earlier. Pretty sure. All right, let's move on to another one. Well, won't you looky here? Colon, raise hyphen wisdom. And look, they brought it to a full stop instead of a dangling participle colon. I wonder why. For this claimant, sensation of the cognition is with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant. 
Wow. Immaculate sentence there, folks. Let's look at the titles here. Wow, look at the full stops. The colon in front of the tilde and the numbers. Wow, this looks like an individual that knows what they're doing. This one gets two thumbs up from me. Oh, and look who it is. Ricardo Marseille. Much love, Ricardo. Great job. Hope you start making videos again. Period. Space. Colon. Space. I. Period. What in the hell? Colon. Correct. Space. Hyphen. Syntax. Hyphen. Sentence. Space. Structure. Hyphen. Space. Quantum. Space. Grammar. Hyphen. Communication. Hyphen. Language. Period. Co-op car race, Southern Manitoba. <laughs> Clickbait. I don't see any car races. Do you folks? Do you see any car races there? Quartermaster Brief Media. Two months ago. Oh, this is another acolyte of Colin Russell, Ivan J. Colin Gould using quantum gobbledygook. Using the old colon space. Oh, look, there I am. <laughs> Should I look at it or should I not? Would it even be worth it to look at something like that? Is this the guy wearing his little badge up there? He's so important. Maybe I should look at it. I don't know. What do you think? You think I should look at that, folks? You think he's important enough with his little badge? Okay. Nothing much of any intelligence going on here, folks. <laughs> Screen's all black? Really? It doesn't look it look it appears on my screen that you're actually seeing what I'm seeing, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's on your end there. It must be on your end because on my end, it shows that I'm screen sharing. Monica Lane Lindsay. Okay, I said the last one was the last one, but maybe this one will be the last one. I'm intrigued. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Another mark, lowercase k. 
type person. So we have a lot of Mark lowercase k propaganda and some conspiracy. Oh, hey, look, David Goggins. I don't know if any of you follow mixed martial arts, but John Strickland, former, uh, I think, middleweight champion, called out David Goggins and did a little challenge. Man, if David Goggins accepts, David Goggins is going to get his ass whooped. Poor guy. Who else? I think that's about, oh, Joey John Lester, but there's no content on that channel. I've already looked at that. There's Property Geek. Foreign Correspondent. I think this is Young Clarence again. I think. This must be their old channel. I think these are all the same videos that were on that first channel we looked at. He's got a decent amount of subscribers for correct sentence structure on this channel. Too bad he doesn't post on it anymore. Didn't capitalize on that. All right. Well. That's about it. I don't see anything else on here. No. This looks familiar. Lawrence Gilchrist. Ah, you must watch my channel because look, he uses the colon in front of the numbers. Awesome. For my authentic view and sensation of the earth and data is with this content shared by this author. Ah, ah, bro, where's the space between the comma and the C? And they did not allow for this last colon here. So he ends the sentence on an of the, on a concern, which zeroes out the entire sentence, unfortunately. However, it's just a small mistake, easily fixable. Other than that, oh, wow. He's actually copy and pasted my sentence into his construct because I am the only individual that uses this word perpetuity. In six years, I've I started using that word in my copyright copy claim, and anyone who uses that word got it from me, pretty much, I would say. And if you think I'm wrong, you can think that, but I'll bet you if you ask anyone who uses this word in their copyrights that they got it from me. And they use the word "kuliana." Sweet. Well done, John. It tickles me to say, oh, oite, awesome sauce. And they use their own little flavor here with native tongue. Cool. Awesome. And they use the correct colon usage here with the colon, with the space after communications, and then the colon tied up against the C and claim. Awesome. Awesome job. Just a few small errors, John, but it's good to see someone out there coming along like you are. Awesome. Well, I'll end it on that because that's a positive note. That put that definitely put a smile on my face. Do we have any grammar questions in the chat? Probably not, but there's always hope that someone would ask 
a grammar question or any other question. So as I said, you know, this live stream will be available in the member section, tier two member section, loyalists and contributors. You can rewatch the unedited form of it over there. And uh, I will try to edit it, edit out all the superfluous, superfluous, super, whatever that word is, edit out all the unnecessary stuff and put out a public version of it. Why is there a space in between the colon and the video title? Why is there a space in between the colon and the video title? I'm guessing you mean my video title. Let me look and see what you're talking about. Hold on. On both sides of the colon. What colon are you talking about? There are a lot of spaces there, bro. What what do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean there. Let me pull it up. Well, both sides of what colon? I don't see what you're talking about. I see a colon and then a bracket in the word live stream and then another bracket and then correct hyphen claim and then a colon space syntax hyphen method space is colon space consideration Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. That is a typo. That is what is known as a typo. Thanks for pointing that out, quadruple A. You got me, bro. <laughs> I fixed it. You got me. They caught me lacking. They caught me slipping. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? They caught me lacking. Now my whole shit's going to fall down around my ears, bro. Nah, I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. How many times do I say this in videos? Everybody makes mistakes. I don't care how many colons or hyphens are in your name. You make mistakes. That's just the way humans are. It could be anything. It could be a brain fart. It could be just typing in autocorrect. It could be a number of things. And you got to go over everything. And I did go over that. I just missed it. That's all. And you do have to allow for those things when you're auditing uh, documents and stuff like that. You know, that's the balance of the honor and the grace. But hey, when you see a mistake, you just freaking fix it. It's easy. You just fix it and move on. It's not a big deal. It really, really is not a big deal. Like, for example, if you have a live life claim and you know there's incorrect grammar on it, if your volition is to be correct and fix it, then you will fix it. If you can't fix it right at that juncture in the now space, it's okay. As long as your volition is to fix it eventually and then you fix it and then you move on. That's what's great about this stuff. And that's what a lot of folks just don't get. They get so caught up in, in uh, like, like it's a grave matter. Yes, the, the, the grammar is sacred to me. That's why I fixed the mistake. That's why, with humility, I admitted to my mistake and fixed it. Bro, it's not a big deal. It's cool. It's chill. It's no big deal. And uh, that too, you know, as long as there's no harm intended. Like when I do audits, I'm not intending to harm anyone. I'm actually trying to keep people from harm by pointing out that these people don't have closure on the grammar and they certainly lack humility. They're not correcting their mistakes like I just did. 
I correct this stuff in the public. How many people do that? How many people do you know in the quantum grammar domain that admit to a mistake and correct it in public? I have done it numerous times. Is there a long lag between us making a comment and then you seeing it? I'm not sure. I, I can't certify that, Jason. Um, if a comment pops up, it doesn't mean that I automatically read it if I'm looking at something else, you know what I mean? So I have no idea what, what that is. S in estuary. Can you talk about the ES? ES in estuary. Yes, it's no contract. It's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. I can tell you that right off the bat. No contract. Estuary is no contract. And if you have access to an etymology dictionary like Eddie Online or whatever it is, or even Google, even Google, you can just look up estuary etymology, and you will be given a choice of etymological dictionaries to look at. You can look it up yourself and get your, you know, all the information you need for that. It's a no contract word, and I've never had to use it, so I don't really know too much about it other than it is no contract because of the vowel in front of the consonant. Putting the thinking before there's something to think about. All right, folks. Thanks for participating. Appreciate it. I don't know when I will be able to do another live stream because I'm going to be very busy doing other things other than quantum grammar for the next few weeks. So, you know, I don't know when I'll see you all again, but it was good uh, good seeing everybody in the chat today, all the people who decided to participate, like Jason, Quadruple A, Nine Great Danes, Mad Dog Magoo. What was that? Mad Dog Magoo. Who else? Extra Mundo Terra. Uh, Jason's going to make me look up this word now. I don't even know what it means. I've actually never seen that word. Oh my goodness. Bro, okay. Brace yourself for what I'm about to say. All right? Did you freaking look the word up, Jason? Did you look up the word estuary in the etymology dictionary? Did you do that? Yes or no? We're going to find out if there's a lag or not, because I just asked Jason a question, and he's not answering. A simple yes or no will do. Did you freaking look the word up? I don't know how long it takes to type out a three-letter word or a, no, a two-letter word. But it looks as though there must be a lag on Jason's end because he's not answering. Oh, look at this. I'm challenging the guy. I'm asking him a question. I'm actually digging into what he wants, his questions. And now he, he says, thank you, Jason. Have a great day. He, do, he doesn't want none of this now, now that I'm actually doing it. Oh, come on. What a jip. What the hell? Jason, please answer this question. Did you look up the word estuary in an etymology dictionary? Yes or no? Did you look it up? No. There you have it. 
So if you haven't looked it up, then you are looking to me to give you your answers, right? Rather than looking it up yourself. Would that be correct? Assessment? Would that be a correct assessment? You are looking for me to give you the answer because you have not done the work. You see this word? Asterium. Do you see how the word is spelled? Two vowels in front of a consonant. Much like the word use, when you look it up, it gives you, it goes back to the word oite, O E T I, which I salvaged. Same thing here, Jason. If you would actually do the work and look it up, you will see this. If this were me and I had to use the word estuary, but it's no contract, I would just simply do a salvage on this word, create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, finite mean for the word asterium and use that. Boom. Easy peasy. So there you have it. So for that little tidbit of work and knowledge that I just shared with you, you can send me six point six troy ounces of silver, or whatever you think that knowledge is worth to you that I just shared with you, I just gave to you. Um or, or you can send me a couple couple hundred bucks in my coffee donation place. No, I'm just kidding, man. Just kidding. <laughs> Although, if you do want to go to my buy me a coffee website and buy me a coffee, each coffee is only five bucks. Every little bit helps, bro. If you find the knowledge that I'm sharing with you to be valuable, um, here, I'll share a link with you. You can buy me a coffee for rule one, rule equal. Anyone else? Nine Great Danes seems to be having some technical problems on their end with the black screens. Is a black screen better than a red screen or a brown screen or a white screen? Just wonder. Do you have a preference? I can't type in two places at once. Join the club. I can't either. It's pretty hard to do. But anyways, Jason, all you got to do is look it up in the freaking etymology dictionary. And, and there you have your answer. You have your solution. You just take that positive performance Latin word that the word estuary comes from. Take that word that starts with the AE, which is positive performance. Create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite mean for that word in your dictionary. And then you just use it in place of estuary. So you write out the correct word. And then right after it, you put in brackets estuary so that they know what you're talking about. Easy. Easy fix. So again, 6.6 milligrams in crypto tokens. How about, how about 0.6 Bitcoin? Can you send 0.6 Bitcoin? Yes or no? I'm seeing all of your replies. You said, I can't type in two places at once. You said, I can send 6.6 .6 milligrams in crypto tokens. You said, you're not seeing any of my replies. That's interesting. You're telling me what I'm seeing or not seeing, which is a huge no-no, bro. I would never tell someone else what they're seeing or not seeing. I'm just messing with you. Anyways. You can send me 0.6 Bitcoin. Go ahead and email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com if you're serious, and I'll send you the wallet address to send that 0.6 Bitcoin to. If you want to. 
if you think what I just shared with you is worth something or whatever you think it's worth. All right, folks, that was fun. Peace out.